Hello everyone again, this is David. Um, this is my favorite albums of 1995, and I'm back to the rules of I had to listen to it. 94, I flubbed the rules because there were like three or four that I didn't listen to in 94, but there weren't any other. I needed to make a 10, so... 95, however, is a better year. It has a couple honorable mentions. Um, Voivod Negatron is in there. Uh, this is a fantastic album, but it just wasn't the same without Snake anymore. It's I like the production. It's more raw than previous ones, and... Uh, it's just got a different sound, different singer, different bass player. Uh, Eric Forrester is fantastic on this and the following album, but total different feel for uh, Voivod. Uh, and Night Swan by Third and The Mortal. This is an EP. This is with their new singer. Uh, her name is Anne Marie something. And. Uh, different voice for third in the mortal uh but still really really awesome the follow-up full length is fantastic and uh i believe that came out in 96 so that might be that'll probably be on my next video um so those were my two honorable mentions voivod and third in the mortal so my top 10 from 2000 or 1994 no 95 sorry uh, Fear Factory, Demanufacture. I listened to this like crazy when it first came out. I don't remember listening to it as much as I did until I repurchased it a year or two ago and remembered every song. I remember having posters of this cover, and I believe it's a Dave McKeon cover. So I loved it even more because he was the artist for the Sandman covers. Uh, Death Symbolic. I saw them on this tour with Nevermore opening up. And this still had Gene Hoagland, but a different bass player and a different drummer. Um, the bass player wasn't up to, like, Steve uh, standards, but good enough to hold his own, especially on older songs. Um, Symbolic and Zero Tolerance are probably my favorite songs on here. I know Crystal Mountain is a lot of people's favorite. Um, this one, I, you know, you could start seeing uh, a little bit of repetition on this album um, but with Gene Hoagland still in the band I thought it was awesome uh, this was a band that got me and my nephew to start playing music together uh, this was kind of exactly what he was looking for heavy music with a female singer um, he and my friend Corey just loved this album when it came out this is gatherings mandalion uh this is a version with bonus cd on it of course i have the extended version um but yeah if you are interested in listening to it check out uh in motion number one and number two they are fantastic songs that was kind of like the thing that pulled them in, pulled all of us in. It was the first thing we heard. This was after they had gone through a few other singers. One was a death metal singer who was kind of eh. And one was a male clean singer with a female singer. At one point, I think they had two singers in the band at the same time. This lineup would pretty much stay the same until she left the band. And then they got a different singer for two albums. Um, one of the guitarists left at one point, though. Ani DeFranco, Not a Pretty Girl. If you're thinking, what, what? Uh, listen to the guitar playing on this. She is playing stuff that is just so crazy and complicated and singing at the same time. So awesome. Um, what was the... Let's see. 
can't read these titles on the back. Light of some kind has this guitar part that's like so awesome, and her voice is fantastic on this album. Oh, out of the ashes of sanctuary came nevermore. Uh, the first two songs on this album are just amazing. Uh, what Tomorrow Knows and Cold Black Future, also known as CBF. Um, just, they still had hints of Sanctuary. Half the album is done with one drummer, half the, the other half is with the drummer that would continue on with them. Um, Worrell's voice on those first two songs are fantastic. Um, I kind of missed what Sanctuary's Into the Mirror Black had going for it. Uh, this is Jim Shepard and Worrell Dane from Sanctuary, and Jeff Loomis was part of Sanctuary before they broke up. Um, just awesome. Marillion, Afraid of Sunlight, has two of their best songs, Beautiful and Afraid of Sunlight. Um, also, Pete Travis plays fretless bass on this album, on uh, Afraid of Sunlight, and maybe Beautiful, I can't remember, and just awesome. Um, my ex-girlfriend, who prevented me from going to see Dogman, King's Mix Dogman Tour, and Voivod and Damn the Machine, ended up going to Chicago to see them on this tour and I was very jealous uh, but then I would have had to hang out with my ex-girlfriend so I probably wouldn't have uh, anyway um, but yeah so I've never seen Marillion live Faith No More King for a Day Fool for a Lifetime this is probably my favorite Faith No More album uh, it has Trace Bruants from Mr. Bungle playing guitar on it, but it just has tons of great songs, tons of different feel, um, and some of that aggression that I was talking about, uh, like uh, Cuckoo for Kaka, I believe the song is called, and Gentle Art of Making Enemies, and Ugly in the Morning, but then you have songs like um, Star AD, which sounds like a crazy mix between like, like a, almost a disco-y kind of funky song. It's just awesome. This was wet the top of their game, in my opinion. Mr. Bungle, Disco Volante. Um, did I call this Mr. Bungle? I meant Faith No More, King for a Day, Fool for a Lifetime. Um, but I might have been looking at this. I loved their first album. This was somewhat of a disappointment, and the show that followed it was kind of disappointing. It's funny that I thought that because when they played on their third tour, Mike Patton mentioned how badly they played that night. Um, so I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, it does have some really good tracks on it, but there is a little bit of a filler on here, but I was still so much into Mr. Bungle at this time. My Dying Bride, Angel and the Dark River. This is a doom metal band. Uh, they started out more of a death doom metal band, but this was when he started singing, and um, just... Just awesome from start to finish. I'm going to see. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, his vocals are really kind of depressing and low and mournful. And uh, if you like one song, you'll like them all. If you don't like that first song, you probably won't like anything. Um, but the first song is called Cry of Mankind. And it has a guitar loop that goes... And it's just super awesome. It's so good. I saw them on the tour following this. The only time I know that they have toured uh, the United States. And number one album from 2000, or 1995 was 
King Crimson's Thrack. I saw them on this tour. It was fantastic. My friend Dave Martin got me into them. Um, I loved all the 80s stuff and this. I didn't get into the 70s stuff until like three years later. So obviously you know that I wasn't obsessive about music like I am now because I would have never waited three years for a band that I really loved. I went to see them on this tour. They're fantastic. Didn't buy a t-shirt though. Um, we had great seats. We saw them at the State Theater. Uh, just amazing. That was the first concert I ever went to where everybody just sat down and I loved it. It was so good, um, but this album has basically it's a double trio: three, three, uh, two drummers, two bass players, two guitarists, and just, just awesome. And they remixed this, and it sounds even better, and it sounds really good in 5.1. Of course, this is the 5.1 DVD version, so. Just awesome. If you're going to get it, get this version. Also this year, the 95 came uh, Varum, which was like an EP. That was the calling card. This was the love letter. Goodbye. <laughs>